Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Modelcraft and welcome back to more modelling for beginners and here we are on episode 4. So I left you last time with these parts painted as a R and page 3 of the instruction booklet. Here we go. Details. The detailing if you like of these cockpit sidewall parts and the addition of those to the fuselage halves and then the addition of the fins and the engine cowling inserts to the fuselage halves. So I have already done the right hand side cockpit side panel. There you go, finished and in situ. The instructions quote 155 for this oxygen hose or whatever it is. I assume it's an oxygen hose and that is olive drab. I've painted it with H319 light green just so that it stands out a little bit more against the cockpit side and then I've used the Edward Space decals for these larger panels here and these are actually from the kit decal sheet because I didn't see any need actually for the markings here to be sort of big raised and, and, and contoured so I've used the kit decals there. So now <coughs> I'll continue with the left side and get that caught up. Now there is a choice to make here. If using the space decal set along with me, uh, the instructions show the use of this decal number 18. Come on. There you go. Instead of the kit part that's going to be the modeler's choice. I'm going to use the kit part because it has much greater relief and I can live without it having a few small white dots on it. The other kit part that needs to be added is this throttle mixture and propeller control I'm assuming. That needs to go in as well so I need to clean those parts up and paint them black as per the Airfix instructions. On top of that you've got a big lever here, uh, this little doofus here that are going to want picking out in a different paint colour as well and as you know or could probably see these have already had the what this part has already been washed I'm just going to use a little bit of XF85 and I'm going to do what everyone says you can't do and brush paint this thing and this is my thin down for airbrush use XF85 so it's very very thin and this paintbrush is awful As you can no doubt see, it's going on perfectly fine. As I say, it's very thin and the, and, and the technique of painting it is really just kind of blobbing it on, but because it's so thin it levels out and it's, it looks perfectly okay when it's done. And it tends to hold a little bit more of a satin sheen to it than it does when you spray it. There we go, that's that one done. Get off there. And same again with this trim wheel. That thing on the sidewall that's shaped like a, a four spoke star thing, that's not a trim wheel. I've looked it up. It can be black or green. I'm just going to leave it green. I've no idea what it is. It's a thingy. But it isn't. Categorically, isn't a trim wheel. Anyway, that's those two pieces painted black. them on once they're dry. Now then, these Edward 3D decals just just as before when I showed you with the instrument panel, first off, pop them in the water and let them sit for a second. With the other side panel, this one that's completed, I discovered with this um, large piece here that the adhesion of the decal without any help from the 
Ammo Ultra Glue was poor, frankly. So I'm going to use the Ultra Glue uh, regardless. I've got a cocktail stick here. And I'll pop a little glue just along this moulded in detail, which is what I'm going to put this strip onto. Don't worry if it gets a little bit splodged about and makes a bit of a mess because we can clean it up with a damp paintbrush once the decal is in position. I'll grab hold of it. And just sort of manipulate it into position as best I can. If I can get this front edge in place under there. Yep, there we go. Okay, this is going to be a problem. That's stuck down a bit a bit better at the front and then it's taken the curve okay for this rear part. I knocked it off again by trying to press it down. There we go. This is wider, this decal is wider than the piece of moulded plastic it is attaching to. It's considerably wider actually at the back. And it might be that once the glue is dry and it's properly stuck in position I might trim it down but I'll see if it fits as it is I will leave it as it is because the fact that it's wider will be invisible from the top when looking into the cockpit and I have found it beneficial I'll hold this up very closely then have a look at decal number nine in particular and see if you can spot at the very edges of the decal there's like a red pink or pale almost like a halo it's almost like it's very slightly out of register now I don't believe it is out of register I think this is sort of a leftover for the printing process sort of as it slopes down the edge you can sort of see the colors a little bit that have gone into it and I found it beneficial on the others to use the scissors and very very carefully as, as you're trimming the sheet just trim it very very tight to the decal and it, in, a, in actual fact just take that slightly feathered to coloured edge off please focus or not don't know if you can just see it on the edge of the paper there. They've still got that little edge that was on the uh, on the decal. So now the decal itself is sharp and black all the way to the edge. And I'll go around and trim all four edges before I dunk it in the water. You can trim the decal after it's been soaked in water. There's enough structural rigidity about it that you can hold it and do that but obviously it's easier to do it now whilst it's dry and the paper is helping it maintain its shape there we go okay number nine appears to be going in the middle of this bit here so again 
off camera, my apologies. Bit of arrow glue going into position there. Persuade the decal off its backing sheet. Look at that, see which way up it has to be. Pop it into position. Damp cotton bud and podge it. Just gently press it straight down and, and then roll. And soak up all that excess adhesive and water that's come out from behind it. And that's it in position. And I'm going to repeat that exact process for the rest of these. So that will be for decal number 16 and the orange one. And again, I might look at using the kit decals for this area here. And here we are. The rest of the space decals fitted. Dried off. Then I've got the cockpit green, added a tiny touch of white and just literally picked out a couple of the raised details with the slightly lighter shade. Looks a bit over the top here, but when it's all closed up inside the fuselage, it will make more sense. The red handle was uh, inspired by a Google photograph and the other handles or sort of lever ends were picked out in X18 which is semi-gloss black which is a slightly sort of blacker black than the XF85 so they do it just sort of serves to highlight them slightly and we've had a little bit of a dry brush and that's that done that's the easy bit now this is supposed to be fitted here in the recess provided as you can see the other one has been uh, but before I do that I need to show you something that does need to be cleaned up and be careful and check this surface here on this half the ejector circle that you can see here the matching one on that half was raised up so I trimmed and carved that back so it wouldn't serve to lift the plate a little bit higher but what needs to be cle cleaned and tidied before fitting this the edge of this fuselage side. I'm, I'm hoping it's visible but there's a, a mould seam that tracks all the way from back here, goes around and it runs along the centre of this top all the way down and that needs to be cleaned off. It needs to be cleaned off so it doesn't impede fit of anything but also because when this side panel is fitted, as you can see here, it's going to make cleaning that up very very difficult. Note also the little bit of mould damage in a piece of plastic that also needs cleaning off. So using just a fine sanding stick, I just went along the top of this fuselage half, holding it level, just carefully. Don't want to take too much off, but it needs to go run your way along the whole thing <sighs> removing that little raised line of plastic even if you build the model with the canopy open so you might think well it's it's not going to bother the fit if I build it with the canopy open that's correct it will not but it will be very obvious to the eye and look rather ugly so it still needs to be gotten rid of. You can also use a sharp blade if you're confident with this method and just trim it. That is going to need some filling just there. But I think the canopy will cover it but I'm not going to worry about it right now. And of course, there's also the option to scrape it. Pay special attention here where the sprue knob was, just to make sure it's not sticking up at all. And then of course it's easier to use the knife in these corner parts, just get into the corners and make sure that seems gone everywhere like 
so Okay, that's enough of it going to fit this side piece, so I can put that into position. Put some big blobs of Mr. Cement S in there so it doesn't dry out before I get a chance to stick this in. Stick that into place, like so. And then I'll run the glue back in from the top here as well. And that's that side panel in place as well. So what's next? Well, fitting the fin and the cowling insert pieces. So I started with this one, had a look at it and managed to get it to a point where the fit is extremely creditable. However, if I take this one, so all I've done to this part is cleaned off the sprue stubs likewise here, no other prep and if I try to fit this one Uh, this is what I get. It's kind of untidy, it doesn't really work. So really it's just a case of offering it up, concentrate on one area at a time. So I'm going to concentrate on this forward corner first. And keep on offering it up and try and figure out what what's holding that from fitting properly. Why doesn't it fit properly? What's in the way? Well, this, this face here is not moulded very cleanly and neither is this one. So, being careful to only ever trim tiny, tiny amounts at a time, I'll come in here and very, very carefully trim that jointing face so that it is flat. And at the same time, just cutting that corner out to actually be square. <laughs> it's very, very hard to see on the footage, but if I can... I'll take a Sharpie and draw what I've just done. So, if you imagine the fuselage half, half that's the fuselage half going away there and this here is a joint face area what you want is that nice straight line so that the part can come in with its equally straight line and sit nicely like that what we actually had was something that looked more like that so I've trimmed out this corner here and I've trimmed off this corner here to end up with a piece that looks more like that. I hope that makes sense. And I haven't done anything to the tail piece yet, but let's see if it fits any better now. Already, you can see that there's no longer a gap just here. It still doesn't fit nicely here. certainly better so I'll just clean this up anyway same kind of thing it's just got an edge on it 
Let's look at this. This has an undercut moulded in it, it's not straight. And that's got the same sort of edge thing going on, so I'm going to flatten this off first. probably can't even see that. And that's better again, but it won't come this way enough. It's, it's sitting, it's a little step inwards. So I'm going to relieve the tab here a little bit and the back edge of this part to allow this tail piece to fit further over. So to do that I use the good old number 15 and very carefully and this looks precarious as anything I know. Run it along and I've got the top of the blade in the top of that joint and I'm just rounding off this tab a little bit. Trying to allow it to be a little bit of a bit more of a snug fit. <laughs> and to anyone who's sitting there going, "Well, this is a faff. Why can't I just glue it on a fillet?" You absolutely can do that. The problem with doing that is that filling something like this with all the panel lines that go around it. It's going to be quite awkward and there'll be a lot of cleanup required. So if you can get the bit to fit more correctly in the first place, it's going to save a lot of work all round. That's getting there. It is better. I need to continue just clearancing out to let this part sit further back. So I'm doing the same thing here but to the fuselage side rather than the fin. somewhere. And again I think this shows the real the value of the number 15 blade setup. It's very very versatile. Starting to get somewhere now. Need to be patient. It's <laughs> difficult at times, but just need to be patient. Gradually, carefully, incrementally, inch your way towards a, a better fit. Sometimes, I mean, there are times when it will never be perfect, but every percentage point of difference we make now <laughs> saves work with filler and sanding and rescribing and priming and messing around later. Right now I've got the corner working and that's pretty much fitting in position now. It's just a little bit too high. Yeah I'm going to trim the bottom of this tab as well because it's interacting with the shelf here. I could even take that shelf right off. That shelf is there. It's the top of the undercarriage bay part. This is hitting it and that's what's not another thing that's not letting it sit into place properly. And the size of this tab is Largely irrelevant as long as there's a little bit there just to help you position the part. Apologies about the children making a racket outside. That's what they do. <laughs> I 
There we go. Trumpets please maestro. And I will go round the whole thing and just make sure I, I can see that I need to take a little material away here as well to allow the back to sit snugly and just generally go along and straighten and neaten up all the joint joint faces but there a few minutes work trimming has saved me many minutes of filling and sanding I think here now that I've got the tails on I just glued these very very gently and carefully with a bit of extra thin put them in place and then I've reinforced the rear of the joint with a bit of super glue which I'll have to sand down I'll have to flatten off in here so as not to impede the fit of the fin but I've got to clean up these eject pins because there's all sorts of lumps and things there which will stop the fin from fitting together flush anyway which only leaves the cowling inserts which are offered as a separate part so you've got the ones with the flush holes in them like this and you've got the sort of the gill type ones which fit on the British version and I found that the fit was okay this one's actually a lot better than the other one was but although it may not be obvious from that view it sits in a little bit it isn't flush and obviously the gap around the part is quite big so what I've done to in, in an effort to fix this on this one is I've trimmed off the locating plate completely the tabs and I've used some blue tack to hold it in position so that I can get it with the blue tack holding it to sit flush or in fact very slightly proud of the fuselage half of the skin like so it's actually sitting very slightly proud and what I'm going to do next is get some glue on the back of this part and then I'm going to sand it flush so I'll get this blue tack out of the way a little bit so I can get some glue in there make sure I'm happy with the level of the part. As I say, I'd prefer it to be slightly proud, if anything, because I can just sand this part down and it'll leave me not needing any filler. Hopefully. So I've got some super glue on my little plastic plate at the side here. I'm going to pop it into this part and let it. It's a relatively thin super glue, so it will capillary into the joint a little bit. And it will also serve to actually fill that gap as well. There we go. Get that in there. Let that set up a little bit. And then it will hold into position and I can take the blue tack off. I can peel off the blue tack. I could have used a bit less maybe. <laughs> But all the blue tack was doing was just holding it in position because it's so much smaller than the aperture it fits in that um, it will just, you, there's no way to hold it just with a bit of glue. It's a gap all the way around essentially. Okay, so that's held into place. Very slightly proud and I'm going to glue around the remainder of the back of it using super glue. <coughs> a touch of accelerator and that is that glued into position and now with the super glue holding it in from the back I will get a sanding stick and just have at it from the front somewhat coarse initially So what I want to, all I'm wanting to do is file this part down to size. I've got it pretty close now, so I'm going to switch to the uh, finer side 
the less coarse side of the sanding stick. Noting that there is actually a step in the moulding here as well, taking that back at the same time. There we go. Much, much, much better. Sanding sponge, this is the 600 grit Infini sponge back sander. What I'm doing here is allowing the sponge sander to take the contour of the nose just in case I sand in any flat spots into it and I'm just sanding out the scratches I made with the sanding stick to leave this much much smoother and then I'm going to go up to the 800 grit go over it again and I'm making it blue put that back There we go, that is now perfectly flush with the surface. The panel line is still there. So I'm going to use the extra thin glue. So this is uh, Guns Mr. S, just to run around it, and that will melt all the debris inside that panel line. And lastly, I'm going to arm myself with a drill and find one that fits. It's the detail. Use the other one. There we go. So this is a one point four. And I'm going to very carefully just go into each one of these holes. It's clearly visible where they are. They're still there, they've just got debris in them from sanding and just clear them out a touch. And it will take a minute. This is now ready to go together. The fuselage halves are both completed, both cockpit sidewalls fitted all done and good and obviously the centre part so I proceeded to do a bit more test fitting <clears throat> and test fitting of these major parts is something that I start doing as soon as they're off the sprue to be honest right from the get-go I'll be putting things in and seeing how they want to fit and where modifications might be necessary now we already looked at how this radiator ducting assembly was causing some creaks and groans there and I have sanded off these corners just a touch we're not talking much I've just taken some material off both of these corners and in in subsequent test fitting I've also thinned this area here a little bit as well because I found that this side of the trunk exit just doesn't want to sit flush without a little bit of help like so I mean, it wants to sit in like that which would be very very noticeable on the finished model but now that I've relieved the internals a touch it will if I hold it push out to flush 
So that is the part that I'm going to glue first to hold this area here flush with the rest of the fuselage side. In other slight modifications, just at this front edge of the cockpit here, the sidewall, as you can see from the bare bit with no paint on it, I've cut it away to the equivalent of the thickness of this frame. And that's to allow the instrument panel to sit unimpeded against the side of the fuselage which is where it needs to be and you can't see the unpainted area once it's in situ so there's no need to repaint that I did do the same thing on the other side too I did clearance the front edge of this somewhat to let it both fit properly into its recess but also to check that it also clears the front of the instrument you know the edge of the instrument panel nicely so this all lays in position quite happily now I have trimmed off the excess glue on the inside of here and I've also trimmed down those ejection pin marks and roughness to enable the fin to fit together properly and both of these nose cowling areas have been sanded flush so there's nothing for it but to do it and, and glue these halves together. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to use super glue. This is what I do. I've put a piece of uh, this is sticker backing paper on the desk here, so you can see what I'm doing, and see how many times I can dip my forearm in this during the course of this little bit of filming. I've got a cocktail stick with a reasonably re decent end on it, as in not a big thick blobby one, and I'm going to apply some adhesive just in here. I don't want too much in the actual joint because I don't want it splurging out all over the front of the model if I can help it. So first things first, get this in. Get that where I want it. And hold it into position long enough for this super glue to take effect. And obviously to aid that we can use some accelerator if wished and because I'm trying to film it I will bish bash bosh okay that is now holding in position and it's sat flush all good I'm not going to bother gluing the internals in they can't go anywhere once the fuselage is trapped together so that's all fine one final test fit as you can see this comes together with minimal force now everything fits pretty much where it wants to so you need to take the decision on where to start gluing first you can't apply super glue to the entire joint and put it together and expect to get away with it it's not going to happen you need to choose somewhere to start off so I'm gonna start along the top here and just a point with these tail fin inserts the molding is such that can you see that big what looks like a gap there which is caused by there's a recess here for some reason as a mold seam and a step there's absolutely nothing that can be done about that it will require filler and the same thing is actually actually in evidence under here you can see that messy mold seam next to the actual joint and a step in the molding there's absolutely nothing but a recourse to filler here. Initially, this whole area was very low and wouldn't even sit flush, but I uh, got in there with a, <laughs> with a pair of pliers, actually, and I literally bent this downwards like this and did that repeatedly until it got to a point where it sort of nearly fits. Anyway, let's get some glue on some of it and start getting it together. Literally this section from the base of the fin to the back of the canopy rail track is where I'm going to apply glue initially and that's all. Note also that all of the joint faces I have cleaned up either with a sanding stick 
or with a cotton bud moistened in Mr Colour Thinner. I've removed all of the paint from every part of the jointing faces of this model because super glue can only adhere as well as whatever it's on and the paint won't stick to the plastic as well as the super glue will. You run a much greater risk of things popping apart if you super glue on top of paint. And again I'll just pop a bit of accelerator on there just to speed things up because I'm filming as well. I'm going to use liquid cement on this area here. The joints won't be visible on the finished model. So there's no reason not to. There's no risk of a ghost seam in an area where you won't see the seam anyway. And I do the same with tail fins leading and trailing edges. I use liquid cement. I just think it does a better job and again the, the, the whole the risk of ghost seams is much much less on things like this. Usual method of application. Pop a little bit on there. Let capillary do its work and then just gently hold the part together. Don't want loads and loads of it squeezing out onto the surface of the model preferably. If you have a well fitting kit then the seam that's left behind after doing this should only really just need smoothing off and it'll be good. Okay that's the first bit done. Flip it over then and here what I'm going to do is introduce my super glue into there into that joint and I'm going to not have enough room for all my elbows. Use my thumbnail just to hold it open so I can get the glue to go in into that gap like so. This isn't extra extra super thin super glue, it's just normal sort of medium viscosity, but it will get in there quite happily if you give it a chance. I used to use the thin stuff, but the risk of it just running all over the place and making a right mess is uh it's great. Okay, squeeze it together. In this case I'm not going to clean off that excess immediately because I'm going to need to uh, fill this area anyway. And this is going to be really awkward to do <laughs> around the already installed strut and uh, undercarriage doors. You can see that there is a gap here but also this does flip, fit nice and flush without any extra help. Carry on along here. Get the glue down in between the two parts. And then squeeze together. I sometimes give it a bit of a wiggle like that as it encourages the glue down in between the parts a bit more. And I think it should be obvious that the key point here is working quickly. If the super glue starts to go set up before you push the parts together then it's going to create an issue and cause a lot of effort to fix it.
And then in the front of the scoop and underneath here again I'm going to use liquid cement because the joint or the risk of a ghost joint is not a problem. Just hold that for a few seconds to let that take. Cool. And that only leaves this very front end and as you can see we're not going to have any issues getting glue in there because it's not sat together anyway. Oh and something I, I did forget to mention I have removed the locating pins from several locations on this fuselage um, down here at the back and here at the front I actually sliced them off because they were making they were making the, the, the blah, 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 blah. they were misaligning the parts the actual locating pins weren't weren't lining the parts up correctly so I've cut them off to allow me to manually will manually align the parts and finally again back with the liquid cement for this area here and that's our fuselage joined together and with the fuselage halves together I'm going to leave it there for this episode in the next episode we will look at dealing with these seams using super glue and super glue and talc mixed together to, to give a beautiful smooth surface suitable for finishing it with metallic colours and move on to attaching the cowl top and joining the wing parts together. Thank you very much for watching and following along. Thanks as always for all your support in all of the ways that you offer it. I really do appreciate it. So I think with all of that said, it only remains for me to say until next time on More Modelling for Beginners, look out for yourselves, look after each other. I've done that wrong. Look after yourselves, look after each other. And Genesis out.